Hello YouTube, how is everyone doing? It's Professional here. Welcome back to my playthrough of GTA Vice City. On this part, we're going to be doing Phil Cassidy's missions, and we'll also do Colonel Cortez's final mission. So let's do this here. Gunrunners. Phil! Run! Run! Never get a naked flame too close to what a Phil Cassidy's moonshine steals. Shit, Phil. Did uh, you drink that stuff? Hell, you don't have to drink it. Just a good whiff will set you off. Ah, we Listen, Phil, you said you could fix me up with some firepower. Sure thing. There's some Mexican gun runner been doing me for business of late. He does his weekly run about now. <clears throat> hey. Ram his hardware off the back of his trucks before he goes to ground. And you'd be doing me a favor while you're at it. Then finish him off. So basically, Phil Casty said that he'll sell Tommy um, weapons um, if he gets rid of um Oh, and here we get a unique weapon. We get the remote detonating grenades. Um, uh, yeah, you throw the grenade and then you hit the remote detonator and it explodes. If we get rid of his competition here. And so Phil Cassidy is still messing with Boomshine, as you guys remember from Vice City stories. Um, two years later, he's still messing with it. Um, Boomshine is basically, um, uh, it's basically a parody op of Moonshine. It's an explosive form of Moonshine. Um, okay. Now we get rid of these, um, okay. This is why the MP5 was definitely really helpful. Look at that, okay, we got an M60 now, nice. Okay, let's get rid of the other gun runners. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! No, 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 no. Oh, I gotta get rid of the MP5? Okay. I guess I had to get rid of the MP5 for the Mac 10, but I would have really preferred to keep the MP5, but whatever. And now Phil will actually give you a bonus in this mission if you kill everyone, I believe. Now we get rid of these guys here. Okay, they're gonna be on the main highway here. I think we can use the M60 on this. Whoa, okay. There we go, bonus. Okay. And these arms dealers, they, um... They come by on scooters, which is kind of weird. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I don't know why why arms dealers are driving around on scooters. I have no idea. Oh no 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 no! <laughs> Remember in the old GTA games, it was that if you got um uh, if you got knocked off the scooter, um you were instantly busted. It was over. <laughs> yeah, we we don't want that to happen. <laughs> Oh, getting a phone call? I think it's Phil. Tommy, it's Phil. Now cut out all the reminiscent crap and listen to me, you hear? 
Good. Give me a I got me some extra shrink moonshine. Nearing fermentation oh, time, and I just wondered if you fancy having a shot. Seriously, Tommy. Keys. If you like a drink, more. or if you Take need to strip paint, this stuff will make a man out of you. Sure did out of me, even though I can't see out of one eye. I'll be waiting for you. You hear? You better tell <laughs> him, Mario. Hey, Mario. Hey. Before we go over to Phil, let's purchase the Pole Position Club right here for $30,000. Now a lot of people, um, uh, a lot of people miss this, but in order to complete the pole position club for it to generate money, you basically have to go into one of the rooms and just be there for a few minutes. People know what I'm talking about here, um, uh, Mr. Versetti outfit, and then you unlock the Mr. Versetti outfit. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip to the part where you complete it. Um, the reason that I'm gonna skip it is because, um, uh, because I don't want the video to possibly get demonetized because you guys know what I'm talking about, or YouTube to even possibly, you know, restrict the video. So that's it, the pole position club has been completed. And it's a, you know, $30,000, you get $4,000 back. You'll make your money pretty quickly uh, back from this club. But, um, basically, you have to, sp to, in order to complete the pole position club, you have to spend $300, um, $300 on a dance. And so I just, I didn't want to show it, guys, because I just don't want to get demonetized, or I don't want my video to get, um, a strike or something. Because I've gotten, um, I've gotten a strike before on, um, I know I've said this a few times, but I've gotten a strike on, um, Call of Duty World at War. So I did a playthrough of that a long time ago. The reason the playthrough is not up is because I only put up one part, and, um, I got a strike on it for, like, harmful and brutal content, apparently, and I don't know what YouTube was talking about, but that happened, and so, you know, I'm very cautious also of, like, you know, the stuff that's in games also, too, but, you know, just basically do a dance there, you know, spend $300 on a dance, and the Pole Position Club will be completed. Now let's go see Phil. This mission is really important. Boom Shine Saigon. Saigon was actually the capital of South Vietnam before it was Phil, renamed Ho Chi Minh. Hey, Tommy! How you doing? This bitch you lost. I swear you should lay off that Boom Shine, man. It smells like paint stripper. Just make my eyes burn. Shh, 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 Tommy. Hey, come over here because there's something I want to show you. Something. Oof, God, should I be able to smell that from way over here? Don't you worry about the Phil. smell, oh. Tommy. You just watch this. Shitty, cheap, bad news or something. There's some more on the bench. This is gonna go really bad, as you guys can tell. He forgot to put batteries in the detonator. Ta -da! Oh, damn! <laughs> Yeah, Phil messed up pretty bad. That is how Phil lost his arm. So in all the other GTA games, when you see Phil Cassidy in Liberty City Stories, you see him in um, uh, GTA 3, and he has no arm. That's how he lost his arm, that way. He says to, um, he tells Claude that if you were with me in Nicaragua, maybe I wouldn't have lost my arm. Now he says, watch out Charlie in the tree line. Charlie is actually a reference to the um, Viet Cong and the NBA during the, um, Vietnam War. Yeah, he's hallucinating right now. He's going into shock. There's a lot of Vietnam War references. Yeah, right there. A lot of Vietnam War references to this, uh, in this mission. Not the hospital, man. Too many cops in Viet Cong. Too many cops in Viet Cong. Phil's place, asset completed. So that right there, that is how Phil Cassidy really lost his arm. And so there's special weapons, there's an M60, an RPG, a minigun, remote that controlled grenades that are at the, um, at his place that you can buy now. 
And so that mission just has a lot of like Vietnam War references to it. Like the mission's called Boom Shine Saigon. With Saigon, that was the capital of South Vietnam. And then when North Vietnam took it over, um, they renamed it Ho Chi Minh, which was the leader of the communist leader of North Vietnam. Um, Phil Cassidy also says, watch out Charlie in the tree line. Like I said, Charlie is a reference to the um, Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese army. Um, that's just basically just a term for the enemy um, during the Vietnam War. Um, and what is, uh, he, yeah, he makes some military terms as well. Um, it's unknown whether Phil Cassidy really did fight in Vietnam. He makes a lot of references to it, but it's never confirmed whether he actually did. Um, oh, we got a phone call here. Tommy, it's Phil. I want to thank you for helping me out back there, son. Damn Charlie, he'll always ambush you somewhere or the other. Anyway, the wound is healing well, and it means I'll no longer be defrauding the government on my disability check. Means I'll no longer be defrauding the government on my disability check. And this game had some funny dialogue. Um, but um, uh, when Phil was actually saying the Viet Cong, um, too many cops in Viet Cong, probably his funniest line at the hospital. The Viet Cong were actually a, um, uh, they were a rebel group that was mostly from uh, South Vietnam that were communist sympathizers for the North. They did a lot of the bombings and a lot of the sneak attacks. Um, they were the ones in the Vietnam War who were actually responsible for the majority of the traps. So all the traps that you see in movies and stuff, the Viet Cong were the ones who did that. And um, uh, so they did some really scary traps. They were very um, inhumane, especially towards prisoners. And so they were, they were some pretty bad guys. But that's what Phil was talking about when he said Viet Cong. So right now, let's purchase the boatyard here. We're going to purchase another business. The boatyard. Hello? 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 Put it out. There's a dude here. <clears throat> hey, suit dude. I guess you're the new owner. Yeah. Which one of the boats is the fastest? It's already in the water, dude. I thought you might want to try her out. Dude, she's already running with a 300 horsepower and engine. And the fiberglass hull, she just shoots through the waves. She can do like zero to 60 in four seconds flat, oh, dude. And she can hold like 20 bales of the best Jamaican yeah, smoke yeah. right in the hull. So go ahead, dude. She's ready to fly. Yo, yo, uh, suit dude. You got a light? Dude. Dude. <laughs> now, I don't know if you recognize that guy there. Do you guys recognize him? He's actually in San Andreas before he actually appeared. That's Jeffro. Remember, remember Jeffro in San Andreas that you actually um uh, that CJ gets for his mechanic shop. That's Jeffro right there. Jeffro was from Vice City, and then he moved to um San Fierro. Now, in order to complete the um uh, the boat business on um, the boatyard, you have to just basically complete this race collecting the packages, and they seem to be drugs. Um. What's frustrating about this race, though, is that it doesn't tell you where the next checkpoint is after you pick it up. Um, and so you just gotta be cautious where you're going here. Okay, there it is. Don't put too much speed into this, because if you put too much speed, you won't be able to hit the jump. I mean, you won't- you will miss the next jump. Okay. Oh, get out of the way! Get out of the way! Okay, we're doing pretty good right now. We got a minute and 10 seconds still left. I think we're making good time. Usually you have like close to 20 seconds left when you complete this, um, when you do complete this race. Come on, turn.
Come on. Oh, no, no! This is what I hate about this race, is that it doesn't tell you where the next checkpoint is. I thought it was gonna be that way, but I was wrong. Okay, so we got it. Boatyard acid complete. Nice. The boatyard will now generate revenue up to a maximum of $2,000. Make sure you collect it regularly. Okay. Okay, let's go do Colonel Cortez's final mission now. Always scared when I jump off, off out of a boat onto um, shore in, in Vice City because I'm just scared I'm going to fall in the water and it's going to fail. All hands on deck. This is actually one of the funnest missions, too. Circumstances force a hasty departure, amigo. What's the problem? Ah, uh, the French want their missile technology back, and after that last incident, I feel it is time to find safer hoppers. Wouldn't it be safer to fly? I'd be dead before I reach check-in. Besides, I need to get my merchandise out of the country. Need another gun? You, my friend, are worth ten guns. <laughs> So basically what's going on is, remember how Tommy stole those um, missile guidance ships for um, Colonel Cortez? It was from the French government. And so the French government has basically put out a hit on him. They're sending in their secret service, not to arrest him, but to assassinate him. And so here they are. He's trying to leave the country by water. Um... Take out the driver, let's see. Okay, that's another boat taken down. Okay, there we go. They're not going to stop, though. I remember there's going to be a blockade now. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, the, um, this is actually my favorite, uh, my favorite assault rifle is this one, the, um, uh, the Kruger it's called. But I, it's the Mini-14 in real life, I believe. There we go, we're about to clear a path here. Oh, they're on the ship, too. Ah! Blow all these boats apart here. Oh my god, they've got a helicopter! Now the reason I wasn't using the um M60 yet is because I was saving it for this. Another helicopter coming in. <laughs> yeah, the French government really wants the colonel dead. This now. They've said an Apache in. There we 
we go, we got it. M60 can make quick work of the Apache. Tomas, you have protected and served me well. And now you must leave us before we reach the open seas. I will lower my personal launch. Keep it, my friend. A token of my gratitude. Thank you, Colonel. Uh, one more request. While I'm away, could you keep an eye on Mercedes for me? I think she could look after herself, but sure, I'll keep an eye out. Gracias, amigo. Hasta luego. Adios, amigo. The Colonel is a pretty helpful character, and um, uh, and he's also a good friend to Tommy. That he doesn't screw him over. Um, uh, but um, but what I'll say is that, um, like I've said before, the the Colonel Cortez is actually based on a real person. Look up Manuel Noriega if you've never heard of him. That's who Colonel Cortez is based on. Um, he's a parody off of him. Uh, let me get to shore here. But Manuel Noriega, he was the dictator of Panama, and um, Colonel Cortez is from c Central American country. It's unknown what country he's from, but um, uh, Manuel Noriega was the dictator of Panama, a Central American country, and he was a dictator that actually smuggled cocaine, and so cartels would actually bring in um, cocaine into Panama from South America in the 80s. Um, he took power in 1983, I believe. And they would, um, they would pay him off, and he would look the other way, and he would say, you can keep the cocaine in my country for some time. And then the cartel would basically use that as a stopover to export the cocaine to other countries like Mexico and then America and Canada. And so he was basically a drug-dealing um, uh, co cocaine dictator. Um, now, um, Colonel Cortez, he's a very powerful man in his country. He's, I think he's a dictator. That's pretty much what he is, because he says he meets with all these politicians. He meets with these ministers and stuff like that, so he's somebody really important in his country, and he survived like 30 coups. Now, the reason that, that he survived 30 coups is that's actually a parody off of the amount of corruption that was actually going on in um, uh, Central America and South America, because especially in the 70s and the 80s, um, there was a lot of coups in Central America and South America and a lot of dictatorships. And so there was a lot of corruption going on, a lot of really evil um, uh, dictators. And Colonel Cortez is basically a parody off of that, the corruption at that time. So he's a parody off of those dictators. Oh, I'm getting a phone call? Who is this now? Alright Tommy, it's Paul. I've just heard from a mush that you've been a real naughty boy. Somebody's taken offense to you acting like the big guy all of a sudden. Giving it a big shot thing. Well don't say I never warned you or nothing. Boasting is a mugs game, son. Anyway, I heard there's some price been put on your head and someone's gonna have a crack at you, so watch yourself. And remember me, mate. So you heard that what Kent Paul said, that um, somebody's out to get you and there's been a price put on your head. Ooh, okay. I'm always scared whenever I have to jump on shore that I'm gonna not make it. But if they ever do a Vice City remake, please let Tommy swim, please. Um, but um, I guess we'll wrap it up here, guys. So, um... Thank you guys for watching. I'll have the next part up for you guys as soon as I can. On the next part, I think we'll do Umberto Robina's missions. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone.